the day, we're exploring stablecoins, Ripple's ROUSD or real USD, and what they are, why they matter, and how they could transform finance. All right, so let's start, keep it simple. A stablecoin is a cryptocurrency meant to maintain consistent value, usually pegged to assets like gold, US dollars, or dollar-denominated assets. This could also be other currencies and their uh, backing bonds, treasuries, uh, things that are typically less risky, right? Things that are stable and hold their value, uh, which, you know, you could get into inflation and those things, but there, there's a peg to stable value. This stability makes stable coins a reliable alternative to volatile cryptocurrencies, which can swing wildly in price. And if you're in crypto, <laughs> you know about the upside and the downside in most cryptocurrencies. So this is where people take profits to. Stable coins bridge the gap between traditional money and blockchain. They make crypto practical for daily use. Their utility is, is vast. Stable coins power instant, low-cost, cross-border transactions of payments, decentralized finance, DeFi applications uh, like borrow and lending. And if both parties on either side of a transaction want to accept the same currency, then they're a fantastic way to settle that payment immediately. Uh, this is much faster than the hefty fees for wire transfers that you would normally have if you used a bank. A stablecoin settles, like I said, almost instant with almost no cost. Uh, there may be a slight amount of gas fees on most networks. You, you've seen these on Ethereum. UST is a prominent stablecoin. Tether uh, is also on Tron and multiple other networks. Some people use it on Polygon, which makes it much faster as well. Uh, but for the most part, um, these are far less costly than using a bank or a wire, and they settle much faster. Why would Ripple try to do this? Well, the main deal that they have is they've been using UST for almost up to 20% of their daily volume at some points in more liquid markets, like between the US and the Euro or Europe, where both parties, again, are willing to take a dollar-denominated stablecoin. Um, their product ODL, uh, or on-demand liquidity, uh, uses XRP uh, when people want, you know, something on the other side of the transaction that is not uh, whatever they're sending. Uh, but if both parties are this, you know, want USD, then Tether's made a suitable option. But they've also had to pay Tether <laughs> for that. And they've had to pay them fees on the network. So if they're able to use the XRPL and use a stablecoin issued on there, um, and if they're the one that provide the treasury, they then make those fees and uh, take that volume away from Tether. So... A uh, stablecoin like ROUSD can enhance their systems a lot more uh, by serving as a stable intermediary, reducing risk for institutions uh, and improving efficiencies. Uh, and, you know, this is why people already use ODO. This innovation can make Ripple's solution even more attractive for major players in the market, especially those that want to de-risk from Tether, uh, which we, we've talked to MasterCard, we've talked to a lot of other people in the space. And uh, that seems to be the sentiment is that they want to step away from Tether and potential sanctions or other problems that that network uh, and dollar-denominated stablecoin are going to have. So I do think that the launch of ROUSD is imminent here, and I think it will play a crucial role in decentralized finance, enabling seamless lending and borrowing and trading uh, without the volatility of traditional crypto assets, uh, even assets like XRP, right? If you just wanted to cash out into something stable and reliable and know that it was trusted and backed by a party uh, that did have an audited book, uh, Ripple makes a fantastic option for that. Uh, and this will be the pilot stablecoin on the XRPO. So I think it will give uh, governments worldwide um, a, you know, a look at how it should be done, They'll have transparent reserves and they'll be auditable. And with their track record, uh, I think that they are the one to champion this. We've seen others like Circle who have USDC uh, and you have Paxos, uh, Binance. Um, but on the other side of the legal battle with the SEC, uh, now that we have you know a new administration and potential change in you know the SEC chair, uh, which you not know, potential at this point, it's going to happen, Gary's out. Um, this positions ROUSD to be trusted and a compliant option uh, for, you know, a private stablecoin that people could use in enterprise transactions. Stablecoins are essential for crypto's growth. Uh, they offer the stability needed to maintain mainstream adoption at the rate that we're going and for a much larger adoption by mainstream. Um, you've already seen banks pivot to digital wallets instead of accounts uh, in anticipation of digital currencies and stablecoins being issued. Uh, most people aren't even going to know 
that they're using a stable coin. They'll just know that their transaction settled faster. Uh, it'll be a dollar denominated asset pegged. You know, I don't know that we'll get a CBDC here in the US, but I think Ripple's ROUSD will become one of the leaders uh, for people uh, here domestic in the US for high value payments uh, and enterprises. And again, this is going to bridge traditional finance with blockchain, unlocking new opportunities for payments, liquidity, and DeFi. Uh, which, you know, will come as more amendments get passed on the XRPO for liquidity pools, borrow lend. Uh, but you do have the EVM sidechain and the hooks sidechain that allow for smart contract uh, capability right now. And I think that ROUSD will play a pivotal role in the adoption of those uh, DeFi protocols. Uh, if you're excited about where this could lead, please don't forget to like, subscribe, join the conversation in the comments below, and we'll see you on the next one.